Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob here, uh, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. You know the rest. Uh, somebody wrote me a, well, they sent me an audio message with a long, well, no, I'm not complaining, but uh, a rather lengthy list of questions. Well, not so much the list of questions, this, the uh, scope of answering it is kind of lengthy. So I'm going to cover a variety of subjects. Most of this covers uh, Genesis. So this is to the listener over in the UK, where I'll say, yes, I remember you and I got the bomb. Thank you very much. He says he has a Bible study group, and I say, good for you. I would love to have a Bible study group, but uh, I don't have anybody here. So, um, my suggestion is if you want to teach about the uh, different lines of humanity, some people call it seed lines, my guess is, well, my suggestion is to teach Genesis 6 first. Genesis 6 is very easy to prove, my opinion. The Genesis 3 thing about what happened in the garden with the serpent is a little, what I consider, uh, a bit more difficult to answer. And a lot of people just, they, I don't know. All I know is some of the greatest Bible scholars that I know do not believe that Eve was talking to a snake in the garden, hanging from an apple tree, and she took a bite out of an apple. And let's just leave it at that. Now, they uh, this one asked me about uh, what about the different races? You know, um, the average church today teaches, well, you know, Adam and Eve... Uh, they had a black baby, and then they had a white baby, and then a red baby, and then a yellow baby, and then a pink and purple polka-dotted baby. Yeah. But the Bible teaches, as this person knows, the Bible says, kind after their kind. In other words, uh, dogs produce dogs. Dogs do not produce uh, birds. Dogs do not produce fishes. Uh, they, dogs don't produce horses, even though they both have tails and four legs. You know? And that's kind after its kind. How many times did that appear in the Bible? I mean, in Genesis 1.11, it says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind you know apple trees don't produce oranges and apricots don't produce figs it just don't work that way whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so verse 12 and the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself, after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Genesis 1.21 And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that was good. You can read Genesis 1.24 125 after his kind after his kind after his kind i mean you know do you get the idea here and i'm not picking on anybody i'm just saying that for emphasis so where do all these different races come from well that's an easy one all right uh was Adam and Eve the only people in the garden? Or was Adam and Eve a special group of people in the Bible? Um, that's a good question. 
I mean, if Adam and Eve were a special type of group of people in the Bible, wouldn't that explain why in Genesis, why Abraham and Isaac and Jacob were told not to intermarry with the Canaanites? Why in Ezra chapter 9, when Judah came out of captivity in Babylon and were released by the Persians, the Medes and the Persians, why they were told in Ezra 9 to separate themselves from their heathen wives? Was it because they were of the wrong belief system or were they of not the kind after their kind? I mean, you know, let's face it. If they were heathens and they just didn't believe right, just have evangelists and say, oh, no, 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 no. Don't believe in Baal. Believe in the Lord. You know, uh, I mean, really. But there's, you know, they'll tell you, oh, well, you know, they just didn't believe in the right God. So God said to separate and, you know, divorce your wife and your heathen kids. But that's not it at all. I mean, absolutely. Kind after their kind. So let's take a look at Ezekiel 31. And I've already done a Bible study on Ezekiel 31, but I guess we're going to read it. Verse 1. And it came to pass in the eleventh year, in the third month, in the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, he's talking to Ezekiel here, right? Son of man, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to his multitude. Whom art thou like in thy greatness? Now remember, Egypt was one of the first empires. And they were the ones that had uh, all those heathen gods. I mean, Ra was the god of the sun. R.A. And some people think it was, you know, one of the angels. Possibly Lucifer himself. I don't know. But if you look at all the plagues that happened with uh, under Moses in Egypt, like the uh, when the water was turned to blood, well, they had Egypt had a god of the Nile. Don't ask me the names. I can't remember. I mean, I've looked them up for other studies, but, you know, I don't remember all this stuff by uh, memory. Maybe it's Alzheimer's setting in. You know, I'm in my mid-60s. But uh, the, the, uh, they had a god of the Nile River. The water turned to blood. God was challenging the gods of Egypt. The sun god, Ra. It was three days of darkness in Egypt. Where Israel, in the land of Goshen, it wasn't dark there. But it was where uh, Pharaoh was. Three days. It was dark. Three days. Darkness filled the land for three days. Uh, let's see. I think I had a. I think there was a there was a frog god in Egypt too. I think his name was Keke K E K E Keke. I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce it. I don't speak Egyptian. Uh. But uh, they had a plague of frogs. Then they had a plague of flies. And that's where the word uh, Beelzebub uh, means, Lord of the Flies. You know, you ever seen something dead? You know, a bunch of flies hanging around? Well, maybe that was back in the old days before they started spraying all the chemtrails and all the, the uh, insects started dying. I mean, I was a kid, man. We had bees all over the place. Now I, I can go weeks without even seeing a bee. And I keep the flowers uh, watered so that they have some nectar. It's sad. It's sad. Uh, let's see. What else? So, uh, you know, Egypt. Egypt is, to my knowledge, Egypt is never 
never spoken of kindly in scriptures. Always talking about bad. And by the way, when Joseph was in Egypt, uh, they were conquered. Egypt had been conquered by a group called the Hiskos. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. H-Y-S-K-S-O-S -S or something like that. They were Semitic cousins of the Israelites. They conquered Egypt. So when Joseph married the Egyptian priestess, uh, priest's daughter, she was of a similar lineage. She wasn't Egyptian. You know, it wasn't until later that the, uh, the Egyptians threw, threw out the uh, Hiskos. Boy, they don't teach that in history class. All right, so, Son of man, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to his multitude, whom art thou like in thy greatness? Verse 3, Ezekiel 31, verse 3. Listen to this carefully. Behold, the Assyrian. Now, Assyria uh, and Syria were overlapping areas in the Middle East. Matter of fact, the Israeli state, Palestine, I should say, borders Syria to the east. Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon. Lebanon's another country in that area. And what is a cedar? A cedar is a type of tree. Very expensive wood. We grow that here in South Florida. Cedar out in the, um, the wetlands. So, behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon with fair branches and with a shadowing shroud and of a high stature and his top was among the thick boughs. So why is the Lord here uh, comparing the Assyrians to trees? Have you ever heard the expression family trees? Oh yeah. Family trees. You know, it's amazing. Hebrew, Greek, English, we use the same figures of speech today as they did thousands of years ago. So, behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon with fair branches and with a shadowing shroud of a high stature, and his top was among the thick boughs. You ever heard of the Christmas song, Deck the Halls with Boughs of Holly? Fa la 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 la. Yeah, boughs. It's, you know, branches with, you know, whatever. Verse 4 The waters made him great. Um, are we talking about H2O, you know, the liquid? Or are we talking about, like they talk about in Revelation 12, uh, I think it's Revelation 12. Uh, hold on. Nope, I was wrong. Revelation 17, verse 15. It talks about the whore that rides the beast and the, re the beast that rose up out of the sea, you know, in the book of Revelation, chapter 17. Verse 15, and he said, and he said unto me, the waters, the waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So sometimes when the Bible's talking about waters, sometimes it's talking about people, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Other times it's talking about a liquid that you drink. Well, most people drink water. Uh, I've met people that don't drink water. And then they wonder why their health is no good. Yeah, keep drinking that Coca-Cola and beer and whatever else. So, Ezekiel 31, verse 4. So the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon. Verse 4. The waters made him great. The deep set him up on high with her rivers running round about his plants and sent out her little, little rivers unto all the trees of the field. Family trees? Verse 5. Therefore his height was, was exalted above all the trees of the field 
and his bowels were multiplied and his branches became long because of the multitude of waters when he shot forth. Now remember some the Assyrians uh, took Israel, northern Israel, when they separated from southern Judah, you know, Israel and Judah, they were two different people, two different land areas, two different kings. They fought wars against each other. You know, that's, 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 you know, and people say, oh, Israel, that's Jews. No, it's not. No, it's not. God divorced Israel. Jeremiah 3.8. But God didn't divorce Judah. That's a whole study in and of, uh, in and of itself. All right, so, verse 5. All the fowls of heaven made their nests in his boughs, and under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young, and under his shadow dwelt all great nations. So under this tree dwelt all great nations. The Assyrians were a, an empire at one time. And they existed for a number of years until the Babylonians uh, came. And then they conquered the Assyrians, and they took Judah into captivity. But Israel had already been taken into captivity by the Assyrians. And if you look at your history, when Israel disappears from history, the Euro Europeans magically appear in history. Because when the Assyrian army collapsed after being conquered by Babylon... Israelites hightailed it north through the Caucasus Mountains, which is where you get the word Caucasians. They said, you know what? I'm tired of being a slave to these uh, Assyrians. And uh, now we got the Babylonians coming in. And I don't want to be a slave. You know, when you're a slave, does it matter if your uh, slave master is an Assyrian or a Babylonian? I mean, it doesn't make a difference. Either way, you're a slave. Think about it, you know? So they were like, hey, wait a minute. The Assyrian army's gone. They're off fighting Babylon. So we're here, uh, unpro you know, unguarded because the whole army's left to fight. So let's get out of here. So the battle's going on to the south. Why don't we head north? Or as, uh, I don't know how many of you remember uh, Snaggletooth. Was it Snaggletooth or Snagglepuss? You know, the pink uh, lion. He said, exit, stage left. All right, already. So he got, they, they hightailed it to the north, towards Europe. They said, we're out of here, baby. Time to hit it out of Dodge. So they, they got fed up with uh, being slaves, and they, they, they left. Boom. We're out of here. We're out of here, dog. Gone. So, verse 7. The Assyrian. Thus was he fair in his greatness, in the length of his branches, for his root was by great waters. Listen to this. Verse 8. The cedars. Now remember, in verse... Uh, what was it, verse 3? Uh, it said that the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon. Okay, the Assyrians were likened to a cedar tree. Verse 8. The cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. Huh. The fir trees were not like his boughs, and the chestnut trees were not like his branches, nor any tree nor any tree in the garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. What? The garden of God? Verse 9. Listen carefully. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches so that all the trees of Eden, that garden of God, Eden, I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches so that all the trees of Eden, family trees, that were in the garden of God envied him. 
Uh, do plants have emotions like envy or jealousy? Uh, no. This is what you call a figure of speech. Okay? You know, guys look at an attractive woman and say, Woo, look at that fox! Yeah. Is she a four-legged creature with uh, a tail and a nice coat? Well, fur. You know, well, not a fur coat, but, a, you know. No. It's a figure of speech. You know? So, here it is. The Assyrian was in the Garden of Eden. And all the trees that were in the garden envied him. Think about it. So, my opinion is, there were other beings in the Garden of Eden besides just Adam and Eve. Has to be. There has to be. All right, so, you know, Adam and Eve have Cain and Abel. Cain kills Abel. And then in Genesis 4, 17, and Cain knew his wife. Uh, wait a minute. Where did Cain get his wife from? Well, the Bible doesn't tell you. Was it a sister? Maybe he married one of these Assyrian women. I don't know. You know, there's... Sometimes when the Bible doesn't say something, you need to pay attention. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch, and he built a city. What? So Cain and his wife and a kid build a city? Uh, no. You might build a house. You might build one or two houses, and maybe a shed or a barn. Is that a city? No. No, it's not. The Assyrians were in the Garden of Eden. Where do you think? You know, Cain probably went and probably knew all the Assyrians or whoever and got them together and says, hey, let's build a city. I mean, wouldn't that make sense? And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch, and he builded a city, and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. And by the way, that is not the same Enoch as who is from, um, well, it's, it's not the Enoch that went up to heaven. No. All right, so. Uh, we were talking about the, they were talk. he was talking about the flood of the dragon. So in Revelation 12, when it's talking about the flood of the dragon, and I got an hour and 40 minute study on Revelation 12 and the flood of the dragon, if anybody's interested. Revelation 12 and verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood. Now remember, Revelation 17, the waters where the horse sits, where people, languages, nations, and tongues. Flood of the dragon. It's, it's happening in all the Western European nations, all the Western nations today. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Ah, here's a prophecy. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth. He was angry. He was P.O.'d. That means pissed off for those of you that don't know American slang. It means he was really, really mad. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war. Went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God 
and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. See, if you have the testimony of Jesus Christ, but you don't keep the commandments, dragon's not going to be mad at you. Or if you keep the commandments, but you don't have Jesus, he don't care. But if you keep the commandments and have the testimony of Jesus, oh boy, that dragon, he's going to be mad, mad, mad. And who is the dragon? Revelation 12 tells you that old serpent called, uh, that old serpent called the, uh, the dragon, the devil and Satan. Uh, where is that? That is in... Uh, verse 9 and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him you see the Bible explains the Bible alright let's go to Genesis chapter 6 All right, now let's take a look at Genesis 6. Now, if you do not believe that the sons of God in Genesis 6 are angels, may I suggest you read Job 38, where the sons of God shouted for joy at the foundation or the creation of the earth. In Genesis, I think, 1 or 2, chapters 2, I think, said that Adam didn't come until six days, the sixth day after the earth was created when he formed him from the dust of the earth. So either Adam is shouting for joy before he had a body, and wait a minute, sons of God. So how many Adams were there before the earth was created? Uh... They have to be angels, people. You know, the Bible doesn't record when the angels were created, but angels exist. There's Michael, there's Gabriel, there's Lucifer. I mean, you know, uh, when, when Abraham saw the angels coming to visit him and they went to go visit Sodom to go fetch Lot, you know, they were angels. They struck the men of Sodom with blindness. I mean, you know, these are, sons of God have to be angels. There's just no other way around it. Unless, of course, you got believing men marrying unbelieving women. You know, all those women were unbelieving. There were wicked, evil women, and all the men were righteous. And then the men married those unrighteous women, those godly men. And then they had giants for children. Uh, when's the last time you've seen... Believers marrying unbelievers and having giants for children. You know, like Goliath, you know, really? And this is the garbage that they teach in churches, so-called, nowadays. No. Job 38, the sons of God shouted at the foundation of the earth. Adam didn't appear till six days afterwards. Therefore, it couldn't have been Adam. Couldn't have been. Impossible. But they don't want to hear that. And uh, angels can't have sex. Uh, well, when you hear that stuff, you're either talking to somebody that's extremely ignorant or they're devils, deceivers, which probably is the latter and not the former. Of course, it could be a little bit of both. Who knows? So, All right, Genesis 6. And it came to pass when... Men began to multiply on the face of the earth, that, and daughters were born unto them. Men and daughters. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men. Really? I mean, yeah, it tells you right here. Sons of God, daughters of men. You know, uh, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they choose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be in hundred and twenty years. 
See, God wanted to limit the, the amount of time that people could live. He didn't want men to live for 980 years in sin. So he's going to give them 120 years. That's it. Boom. Verse 4. Listen to this carefully. There were giants. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that. So there were giants before the flood. There were giants after that. After the flood. Right? There were giants in the earth in those days and also after that. When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Hercules, son of Zeus, married a woman. A human woman, right? Uh, so, all right. Uh, let's see. Now, they were asking uh, about a couple other things. All right, Genesis 6 and verse 8. So, here it is. God's getting ready to flood the earth. Baptism of water. He's going to wash it clean. Verse 8, but Noah found grace, grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now, I've had people say, oh, there's no grace in the Old Testament. It's all law and judgment and, you know, pfft. no. There's grace found in the Old Testament, people. You know, if you look for the Lord, he'll look for you. He'll find you. You look for him, he'll find you, period. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Look at the first four words of generations. G-E-N-E, -E, gene, DNA, RNA, DNA, gene. You ever heard of a generator? What does a generator do? It creates electricity. These are the generations. Generate. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. He was perfect in his genes, his bloodline. Boy, they don't like to talk about that in churches, do they? And Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Who was Noah married to? The Bible doesn't tell us. Did Noah have more than one wife? Not necessarily at the same time, but did Noah have a knife and be a wife and begat one son, and then that wife died and he had another wife and then begat another son? Uh, you know, it doesn't tell you. That's the problem. It doesn't tell you. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now remember, Ham's not kosher, right? Now, if you, if you uh, chase, trace, not chase, trace back the line of Jesus, all, I think it's in Luke chapter 3. If you tra trace his lineage back all the way to Adam, you will find out that Shem which is where you get the word Shemites, Semites. That's where you, you know, he was the chosen line. Ham was the father of Canaan, the Canaanites. Uh, the Philistines, Goliath, that confronted David, was a of one of the Canaanite tribes, the Philistines. They were from Ham and Canaan. You know, who did Ham marry? We don't know. Doesn't tell us. Was he married to a, an Assyrian woman? Was he married to one of Cain's daughters? We don't know. But I know Shem married somebody that was pure line of the non-genetically mixed up DNA. And then there you had Japheth. 
Now, Japheth was not um, a bad seed line, but he wasn't the chosen seed line. And there was a... Uh, the line of Shem could marry into the line of Japheth and they would be accepted after a period of time. Don't ask me where that is. That's probably in the book of Exodus or in Deuteronomy. I can't find it offhand and it's not important. But Japheth was to dwell in the tents of Shem. So who did Noah marry? We don't know. Who did Shem marry? We don't know. Who did Ham marry? We don't know. Japheth married who? We don't know. All I know is Ham must have done some really bad stuff, and Canaan and his line uh, got involved. His daughters probably got involved with the angels after the flood, the Canaanites. I mean, I could do an entire study on the Canaanites. God said, kill them all and let me sort them out. Well, not actually, but I've done so many Bible studies on this. I hate to make, you know, go into it more. But uh, somebody was asking, was the flood local or worldwide? Now, I'm of the opinion it was worldwide. Well, why is that, Chaplain Bob? Well, it, you know, it's real simple. If the world, if 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 the flood was uh, worldwide, that would explain why the Lord said build an ark. I mean, if the flood was going to be local, wouldn't the Lord just says, "Oh, by the way, Noah, uh, take your family and and go live on top of that mountain there, cause and move, move. You know, we're going to have a local flood here." So why don't you go move and go live on another mountain over yonder? I mean, you know, why build an ark if it's a local flood? But then people say, well, yeah, Chaplain Bob, well, what about all, where did all the different races come from? You know, you got black, you got red, Indian, American Indian, Native American Indians, you got Asians, yellow, you've got brown, Hispanics, um, you know, you got whites. Where'd they all come from? Well, I'll be honest. I don't know. But Ezekiel 31 says the Assyrian was in the Garden of Eden and all the trees envied him. What other trees? Did Adam and Eve's family tree envy the Assyrian? Were there other trees in the garden? Read uh, Jonah book chapter 1. It said that the, uh, the beasts, let man and beast be uh, clothed in sackcloth and ashes and cry mightily to God and remove the violence that is in their hands. And people will say beast, well that refers to animals. Um, well, there's a verse in the Bible where an angel's called a beast. Think about it. But in Genesis 6, it talks about all the high hills were covered, which is why I believe in a worldwide flood. All right, so let's go to Jonah 1. No, I was wrong. Jonah chapter 3. All right, so the Lord tells Jonah to go one way, but Jonah goes the other. Uh, there's a storm. They throw Jonah overboard. Probably a whale swallowed him and uh, takes him and spits him out on the shore. And by the way, Jonah's, uh, well, he went to Nineveh which was the capital of the Assyrian Empire, by the way, spits me out on the shore. And guess what their Nineveh's god was? Dagon, the fish god. So, you know, here it is. Uh, Jonah gets spit out of a fish at Nineveh. And they, their god's the fish god. 
I mean, really? Wow. So, God made it so that the Assyrians would listen to him. Hey, uh, our God Dagon, our God Dagon, sent a prophet by the mouth of a fish or a giant whale or something. You know, think about it. So, so Jonah preached repentance. So, Jonah 3, verse 4. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he rose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. Sackcloth and ashes. You know, people, that's what America needs today. Sackcloth and ashes. And cry in repentance to the Lord. But it, it's not going to happen. Verse 7. And he caused it to be proclaimed, the king of Nineveh. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his noble saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth. What kind of beast wears sackcloth clothing? Huh? 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 But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. How can a beast cry mightily unto God? Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. What kind of beast has hands? Who can tell if God will turn and repent, turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? Oh, yeah. All right. Is beast a derogatory term? Not necessarily. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. Heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Verse 2. And immediately I was in the Spirit, behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. And I'll guarantee it's not an LBGT uh, rainbow flag. Verse 4. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Who are these four and twenty elders? Uh, well, my guess would be the twelve apostles, including uh, Paul, minus Judas Iscariot, and the twelve sons of uh, Jacob Israel, you know, the twelve tribes. That would be my guess. I've had people ask me. But your guess is as good as mine. But that's, you know, I just throw that out there. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal and the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts, four beasts full of eyes before and behind. So are these beasts a bad thing? Verse seven. And the first beast was like a lion. Lion of the tribe of Judah, right? Maybe. Well, he's not the lion of the tribe of Judah, but he's like a lion. 
Why? Because you, we've got the Lamb of God, who is the Lion of the tribe of Judah, right? And the second beast, like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him. Now these are angels, people. These are angels. They got different faces. They got wings. Um, you know, and they're called beasts. Does that mean it's a bad word? I'm not going to say a, a beast, calling an angel a beast is a bad thing. No. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Why do they say holy, holy, holy? Father, Son, Holy Ghost, right? Uh, I don't like using the word Trinity, but I do like using the word Godhead because the Bible says the Godhead. Jesus Christ was part of the Godhead. The Holy Spirit was part of the Godhead, the Holy Ghost, whatever you want to call him. God the Father, Godhead. There you go. Holy, holy, holy. And people say, oh, well, if you believe in that Trinity stuff, you got a false God. Well, I don't believe in three gods. God said he made man in his own image. And the Bible records that man has a body, a soul, and a spirit. Three parts. Body, one. Soul, two, three. Spirit. Body, soul, spirit. One, two, three. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts, the beasts, the angels with the wings, yeah, and when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever. And that's verse 9. Okay. So is beast a bad thing? No. So how did the uh, how did all these different races, if if the flood was worldwide, how would these different races make it after the flood? Well, the Bible records to take two of every kind on the ark. So were there two reds, two yellows, two browns, two blacks, and then Noah and his family? Uh, that's the only way I see it. I mean, I don't see any other way. The Bible does say, you know, it did, did say to take at least two of every kind. In Genesis 6, 19, and of every living thing of all flesh, all flesh, two of every sort, two of every sort, shalt thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee, they shall be male and female. And all these idiots that say, well, you know, race and gender is a social construct. Well, when they want milk, give them a, give them a bull. And when they want eggs, give them a rooster. And then they can talk that social construct stuff to the uh, bull and the rooster and get their milk and get their eggs. Oh, yeah. Verse 20, of fowls after their kind and of cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind, two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. So, two of every creature. Uh, were there a pair of blacks, a pair of reds, yellows, browns? I, that's, I don't know. I wasn't there. I mean, I'm old, but I'm not that old. So, now somebody else asked me a question. Uh, well, same person I'm making this study, this audio for. I knew it was going to be a long one. That's why I did it like this. He says, well, what about other races? Are they, you know, what about salvation for other races? Well, 
the Bible records that only Israel was under the law. Only Israel was under the law. And, you know, Adam, Israel via Adam. So, since Adam and his descendants, his children, fell, they were under the curse of the law. Only they needed to be redeemed. Think about it. Is the whole world under the law? No. I mean, you go to Asia, what are they, you know, they got uh, Buddhism. Do they feel like they need a redeemer? No. What about India? Oh, well, they've got Hinduism. When you read, uh, you know, the Quran, the Muslims, do you know that Ishmael, who most everybody admits is the father of many of the Arab nations, uh, the Bible records that Ishmael was not to be the promised seed. Isaac was to be. Isaac, not Ishmael. If Ishmael was not under the law, he doesn't need a redeemer. And I did a study on that, too. The Arab world and Bible prophecy. And if anybody's interested, I'll, you know, Ezekiel 31, the flood of the dragon. If you're interested in any of these Bible studies and you don't know how to find them on my website, I'll be more than happy to find them. Although uh, World Truth has been having problems, they're probably being attacked because they don't like, um, the you-know-whos don't like what's going on um, but I've got uh, till the end of this month I've got two strikes on my tube channel one more and I'm done I'm gone and then after that I don't know what I'm going to do but uh, yeah so you know only Israel was under the law not the whole world so the whole world doesn't need our, to, the gospel. The gospel, Jesus said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Not the whole world. Paul was considered the apostle to the Gentiles, which they'll tell you was the non-Jews. Well, yeah, Israel was not Judah. Where did Paul go? Uh, let's see. Paul went to Rome. Paul went to Greece. Yeah. Okay. Did Paul go to Mongolia? No, not, not my Bible. Maybe it's in one of those modern Bibles, but not my King James. Did he go to India? Not that I know of. Did he go to Japan? No. China? No. Okay. Did he go to the Congo? No. Where did Paul go? Rome and Greece. Thessalonians, Galatians. Well, Galatia could have been France, possibly. Uh, but Thessalonians, Colossians. Those were Greek city-states. He went to Athens. He said, ye men of Athens, I perceive in all things ye are too superstitious. I find here an altar dedicated to the unknown God, him do I proclaim unto you, Jesus, who is the Christ. And that's the Bob paraphrase, by the way. Um, you know, people, that's... The, the churches in Revelation, you know, Pergamos, um, Thyatira, I think. You know, uh, those were part of Greece. I think they're Turkey now, because those peaceful Muslim Ottoman Turks... Uh, got rid of all the Greeks and took over the area. I guess the Greeks should have gotten rid of their icons, which is uh, their images. You know, I, I'm... Uh, it's one of the only things I really dislike about the Greek Orthodox Church is they love those images. You know, they, of course, they say they don't worship the images, but, you know... 
Lord said, don't make images of anything, you know, heaven above or whatever, you know. But that's just, you know, one guy's opinion that's read the book once or twice. So, uh, let's see. Oh, and he mentioned the book of Jasher. Um, I don't know. I don't put much stock in the book of Jasher. I don't put any much stock in the book of Enoch. And what's the other book? Jubilees. I don't put much stock in that either. Um, you know, I've read them one time a long time ago. Uh, I think everything I need is in the King James Bible. I'm not real crazy about the book of uh, Esther either, but it's there. I'm not going to tell you to take it out because maybe it belongs there. Maybe I just don't understand, but, you know, what can I tell you? But... Uh, I hope I answered all the questions. And um, so, you know, and think about it. I, now, he's from the UK, and I can only talk about the USA. But up until the, from the time of the founding of this country, up until about the mid-60s, in many states, interracial marriage was illegal, particularly between blacks and whites. There were a number of states where it was illegal. And people say, oh, well, that was a bunch of white racists, you know, whatever. But you got to think about something. Back then, the uh, LBGT crowd stayed in the closet. There was no marriages allowed by them. You didn't have lesbians as pastors. And abortion wasn't legal. So were they a bunch of unknowing idiots of the Bible? Or just a bunch of racists? Or did they know more than they know now? I don't know. Well, I do know, but... And if you think it doesn't matter who you marry, may I suggest you read Ezra chapter 9, where Ezra... I think Ezra was the priest, and then Nehemiah was the king when Judah returned from captivity in Babylon. They were grieved that Judah had intermarried with Canaanites and the Babylonians. They were grieved. And they said, separate yourselves from your heathen wives and from your heathen children. They didn't say, oh, preach to them and tell them about the love of Jesus. No, separate yourselves. Bill of divorce, cast them away. And yet the same Bible says God hates divorce. How do you reconcile that? Simple. They were never supposed to be marriage partners. Never. God told Abraham who to marry. Abraham told Isaac who to marry. Isaac told Jacob who to marry. You know? Think about it. People will spend hundreds if not thousands of dollars on a purebred dog. A thir you know, a pedigree bet dog. AKC registered, right? People will pay tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars for purebred cattle. You know, a, a Hereford or whatever, or I, 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 Jersey cows, I don't know. You got beef cattle and you got milk cattle. I don't know, I'm not a cattleman. And then there's people that will spend a million or more 
on a thoroughbred horse. You know, for horse racing. But it doesn't matter who your sons and daughters marry? Really? Really? You care more about the pedigree of your dog than your children? Wow. That's all I can say, people. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.